Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, Sarah Parker Marine and Center for the Study of Racism and Racialization. Um, this is our uh, seminar session this evening, and we are extremely fortunate to have with us uh, Professor Livio Sansoni from the Federal University of Bahia in Salvador, who has come to us via Paris, where he's visiting professor at the Institute of Latin American Studies at Sorbonne there. Uh, he is, uh, a no, dare I say, a notorious figure in the life <laughs> of afro brazilian studies and Afro-Asiatic studies, as we're required to uh, call them in the UNESCO nomenclature. And uh, Professor Sansone's presentation this evening is entitled Field Station Bahia, E. Franklin Fraser, Lorenzo Turner, and Melville Herskovitz, The Transnational Making of Afro-Brazilian Studies, 1935 to 1967. So, you. Thank you so much for making the effort to come here to spend this evening with us. Well, thank you so much for, for this invitation. It's a golden opportunity of doing two important things. Uh, getting uh, to see you again, uh, getting to know your program, and staying with my sister, who I've been able to see for the last two years. Uh, many of us have been separated from my beloved because of the pandemics. This book, uh, of which I present to you a small sum up, is uh, perhaps the only positive fruit of the pandemics in my life. Uh, it's the result of uh, shutting myself up and uh, sitting down and in isolation and, and, and rearranging 20 years of, of documents I've been collecting on the making of Afro, uh, Afro, Afro uh, what we call Estudios Afro-Brasileiros, Afro-Brazilian studies, that is African-American studies, Brazilian style. Uh, it's part of a large uh, project uh, lasting uh, embracing uh, a long period of time from 1890 just after uh, abolition of slavery. Brazil is the last country in the West, you might know, to abolish slavery. Cuba was just 86, Brazil 88. The Rep Positivist Republic of Brazil was uh, launched through coup d'etat in 89. And uh, with, as it is well known with positivism, uh, it, it went together uh, a re-reading and a remaking of the notion of the people. Huh? So it starts with that. Uh, it starts with the first stage uh, of uh, ethnographic sensibility, first period uh, towards what we call the Negro, the Af uh, Afro-Brazilian, uh, which uh, occurred in all over Latin America, from Cuba to Argentina, largely under the uh, super close supervision of Cesare Baruch Lombroso, the Italian criminologist. Um, so the first period of my research, which I completed with a book called the, the Lombroso Galaxy, which is coming out in Italy in March, hopefully will come out with Duke, God knows, um, in English. It's on the making of ethnographic, the discovery of the Negro as something to be studied, not to be uh, hidden away, to be, uh, to be uh, literally, almost literally taken away from pictures and, and, and removed. From and of course, it comes together with the beginning of what we call in Latin America, modernismo, uh, the transformation of, of the specificity of Latin America from honors into bonus, huh? a rereading of Latin America largely on, in the, on the light of the comparison with the, uh, uh, the, big, the big country in the North, the United States, always seen as each other's alter ego, not Brazil and Latin and, and the United States have little uh, each other's mistakes in terms of race relations. They're like the two Germanies. Remember the two Germanies? They're reading off each other's mistakes. And the same occurred to the, uh, to the, in the history of race relations when we look at Brazil and the United States. It's a close entangled history. It's magic word entangled. It also applies to countries, not only to individuals. So the first stage is the discovery of the Negro, as something to be studied by two important scholars, Fernando Ortiz in Cuba and uh, Raimundo Nina Rodriguez in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Bahia, and to some extent, Jose Ingeniero in, in, uh, Ingenieros in Argentina. Few of you know that Fernando Ortiz wrote this famous book uh, Los Negros Burgos in Turin and Lombroso's place. And if you read the book, uh, not only there is a large application to Lombroso, but there is lots of quotes of Nina Rodriguez, 
uh, who published himself in French and self-promoted him. And through Lombroso, uh, who was the, uh, the, the trade union, uh, uh, the, the liaison officer of, of those days, Black Atlantic, if you will, uh, these people got to meet one another. So in many ways, Lombroso is the first, in spite of all our pictures of Lombroso, which is often quite uh, done by people who have not read Lombroso, who are not familiar with his anti-colonialism, pro metissage attitude, part of being a Jew and a socialist, and a racist in some, to some extent. Uh, it's interesting to, to realize that that network put in touch people who would have otherwise not communicated through the lens of criminology, of, of, of phrenology, uh, something now considered to be the archaeology of, of the social sciences. But those days it was very important, especially in a country such as Brazil, where, I said we were in Latin America, where it's much more the way you look like uh, and the way you behave than the way you actually are deep down your genes that determines your color. Huh? So it is much more phenotype than genotype. Nobody was thinking of genotype in the old days, right? But, uh, but it was uh, uh, what under the, in, in the period of the famous UNESCO project of the 50s was called the difference between uh, racism based on origin in the United States and racism based, based on, on uh, frame uh, uh, when applied to Latin America. So that kind of Lombroso's reading of, of, of difference was quite congenial to our Baroque Catholic racism in many ways. The second stage of my book, of which uh, of my project, uh, is, uh, is exactly on the making, of, uh, which is a very much of a transnational uh, process of African Afro-Brazilian studies with Bahia at the center. Uh, uh, if the first book was a bit of a Prussian recherche du temps perdu, or rereading of my Italian, I'm, I'm Italian born and bred, Brazilian, that's done millions of us, uh, was a way of trying to understand the contact between marginal schools of anthropology outside the colonial networks um, and, uh, and, and the kind of sudden version of, of Latin racism in many ways. Uh, this, the, the second stage is on the canonization of Afro-Brazilian studies together with the building of uh, Brazilian universities. Brazil is the country in Latin America, uh, uh, the last country to, to build actual universities. Huh? Our intellectual density is very thin still nowadays when compared to Argentina, Colombia, and all the Spanish speaking countries. So our universities were built around anthropologies around the meeting of the 30s. And anthropology was focusing uh, on, uh, anthropology became in many ways the national science. If in my country, my first country, Italy, history is the natural science, in, uh, social science in, in, in Brazil, uh, for several reasons, including its short life as a, as a, as a country, uh, is anthropology the national, the national discipline. So the making of anthropology, the making of Brazilian university, and the making of Afro-Brazilian studies are very much intertwined. You know? We had you know, two focus for our curiosity. The, uh, uh, our, 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 our roots in, in biology, the, the Indian, the native Brazilian, and our roots in, in Africanism, uh, the, the, the black part of the, of our population. The third part of my, of my project, which I will hope to be able to work seriously as from May, is on the, the, how the, the story of, 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 of black, as a, as a, a black, the black person, as an interesting uh, topic for the social sciences writ large, um, that is to say also medicine, psychiatrist, the law, uh, criminology, social sciences, big, big time. Uh, second is on, on, the, on the canonization of, of the study, the transformation of these in canons, in paradigms, and uh, uh, journals, cathedral chairs. You know? The third is how all this reflects particularly the notion of Africanism, which was largely a, 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 a a, a notion developed around the city of Bahia yeah. uh, and other notions, uh, which, which I will mention now, would reflect on the biography of African leaders in the period of independence, most specifically on the life of Eduardo Chivambo Munlan, who is the first uh, leader of independence I'm aware of, there might be other, uh, who was, uh, had a PhD in social science and history of. of uh, uh, Northwestern with Melvin Herskowitz, he was in his PhD committee, and who actually had a job as anthropologist at Syracuse University. He was teaching anthropology when he set up the, 
the Mozambique Liberation Front. And actually, this for the, for the first year of his life, he was paid by the Americans to wage war against Portuguese colonialism. He managed to keep his salary. He wasn't sure the revolution would have gone through. And he had two, three kids here. So it was like us, you know, you have to make an option between a tenure job, you have a tenure job, and revolution. It's not an easy job. <laughs> it is not an easy choice. So this is the third part. It's, it's a large project, pretentious as I am pretentious, but it, basically I'm, I'm interested in, in we try, without trying to do things focus, which is difficult, in this large connections, uh, which is difficult nowadays in ethnic studies, we call ethnic studies in Africa, for President said, because we tend to, especially because we're obsessed with compassion in the United States, we need, tend to be extremely careful with generalization. We're afraid that whenever, whenever we try, to, certainly whenever I try to generalize, I, I get into, I get bashed up by most American scholars because they, we are not expected to, to pontify on the rest of the world. They're expected to do so, not us. Uh, so it, it is a rereading of, of the circulation of the notion of race and, and, and emancipation from race, uh, anti-racism, if you want to call it, from the South, from the South, the South, and from a city which had an extremely important place in, uh, in, 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 in the making of all of this. Huh? This is the general part. It was supposed to be 30 seconds. It's already 10 minutes. But I think this is it's interesting for you. I hope it's interesting for you to, uh, to, to get a bit of my motivation, what motivates me. And there is a wealth of information, a wealth of information. My faculty, uh, I'm, I'm part of it. I'm part of it in many ways because my institute was funded uh, by a, a talk by nothing less than Melvin Heskowitz in 42 and, and uh, saved the picture of, of his press of his of his of, of this conference which was very pompous i couldn't i would, wouldn't have a copy but yeah, i needed to get it from the schomburg center i need to snatch it from the schomburg center in new york city which for good reason had a copy but we didn't have it so it's a small detail already gives you an idea we, we were born like carmen miranda would have said we were born americanized we we're born americanized uh, under the under the supervision of the Rockefeller Foundation, the Good Neighbor Policy, uh, uh, which is all part of this game, uh, but um, few people recognize it. Uh, in uh, my glasses, in 1940, uh, Salvador was era of change. In the press, there was a slow but steady recognition of the importance of Black popular culture especially in the newspapers associated with the powerful conglomerate diarios associados that received uh, generous support from the, good the Northern American Good Neighbor Policy Committee, uh, presided by not nothing less than Nelson Rockefeller himself. Um, Sabado received that year many important visits. President Getulio Vargas, who visited the first oil well in today's Lobato neighborhood, then uh, Stephen Schweig, uh, the most important uh, German-speaking writer of his time, certainly the one that sold most copies of books in those days. Um, uh, Gilberto Freire, the well-known theoretician of Brazilian uh, racial cordiality and cordiality <laughs> in general. Uh, Lorenzo Dautana, the linguist, the black linguist, possibly the first professional, I don't want to be unjust, but the first professional black American uh, linguist uh, who had done research on the Gullahs, uh, on Africanism in, in, uh, in English of the United States. And that came to Brazil uh, with a very prestigious uh, Guggenheim grant to do some, 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 some sort of the same kind of research, uh, which in fact did. Lorenzo Ilo, uh, Franklin Frazier, uh, famous, uh, already famous sociologist, uh, what just published in 1939, the Black family in the United States, and somehow came to Brazil to repeat the same kind of research, reading the same kind of questions, doing the same kind of pictures, kind of interviews. You'll see part of the pictures in a minute. Can you hear me? Am I to hear? I should shout. Sister, tell me when I have to shout more. Hey, please. Hey, sister. She's an actual sister. <laughs> um, uh, where was I? Yes. Um, and he had already been contacted by nobody, nothing less than Gunnar Mirdal, to contribute to the, to the preparation of the famous book, The American Dilemma. Uh, famous book, The American Dilemma, the, uh, questioning, uh, that's the dilemma, 
how come such an important country uh, could, com could, could combine uh, social mobility with racial segregation, uh, or the dream of social mobility. So we are not speaking of, of, of small fries, we're speaking of important people meeting. And they it's, I discovered that in 1941, in January, uh, the highly popular Bonfim feast attracted uh, even more attention from locals and I said that is normally the case. Uh, uh, let me say that I live on the corner of the, of the Bonfim church. Uh, uh, Stephen Schweig was there twice. Uh, Stephen Schweig would soon publish his famous book, Brazil, Country, the Future, Land of the Future, um, celebrating Brazilian cordiality, uh, a book which is interesting, the stars with the same uh, picture that, 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 that Franklin Fraser renders of Brazil, uh, a picture of um, recreation time in a public school in Rio de Janeiro, where he takes pictures and signals that there are people, kids of all colors uh, playing together. The two do the same thing. Um, uh, Sidney Zweig uh, wrote this book. After writing this book, a few months later, he committed suicide with his wife, Lotte, in Petropolis, writing a famous letter to the Brazilian people saying, it's not because of you that they committed suicide. But it was, of course, escaping from the collapse of his world in many ways in Europe and, of course, the Holocaust. Huh? Um, uh, he came there twice, first in the morning, then he, uh, with his wife for the, for the more religious part, then he left his wife in the hotel, and he came back in the evening, possibly together with Franklin Fraser and Sultana and George Amado, to drink, basically, and see dances and the more, um, how could I say, less uh, sacred part of the, of the festivity. The festivity combined both aspects. Uh, one day later, well, one year later, the Heskovitzes were there at the same party. Uh, street parties. The party that congregates like half a million people, one million people. It's a huge event. Um, and that shows hundreds of pictures. I'll, I'll show you some of the pictures in a minute. Uh, uh, apparently, for, for all these people, the idea of conviviality, of cordiality, of a place that was uh, an expression of communities, of, of a possible interracial, interclass mingling of people that in, no, in those days in the world were not meeting, actually, were actually hating each other. You know, slaughtering each other, uh, got uh, very much, uh, if you, how could I say, uh, from something abstract became something concrete in identifying this festivity as the place to be. Huh? Uh, of course, Frank and Fraser and Sutana were, were running, uh, were escaping from a different situation. They were escaping from segregation. If you go to the Frank and Fraser paper, the Moreland, never managed to pronounce it, Moreland Spin and Archive at Howard University, a brilliant uh, archive. Uh, he, has, uh, he was collecting, uh, again, very similar to Steven Zweig in a way, um, he was collecting newspaper clippings uh, of, of uh, butchering of, of black people, uh, lynching basically, to make a long story short. Uh, some quite, quite terrible pictures he was collecting in, in, in a file, immediately before leaving to Brazil. So uh, from that and from some of his writing and of course his correspondence, he, he was desperate uh, for a break, uh, to make a long story short, desperate for a break. And, and he and Lorenzo Tana have a, have a, a, a break indeed. They, they book a place in the, in, in the best hotel of Salvador in the Rua Chile. They hire for themselves um, a, a white driver uh, with bow tie and they study Portuguese uh, with a white so, or near to white person, Branca da Ter, in the, of the of the elites in the center of Salvador. Nothing special, but in, they were able to do and behave according to this to their own status rather than according to their own color. That's what they they, they say in in uh, in. Uh, uh, although here and there they they notice, of course, uh, color differences which we have in Brazil. They were not. Uh, expressed in the same way that Franklin Fraser was, was experiencing in the United States, where he refused constantly invitation when he couldn't travel in integrated uh, uh, train wagons, which were very few, by the way. So he was very picky, very selective. He would only take uh, invitation, basically the Northeast of the United States. He would refuse all the segregated majority of the United States in those days. Um, the... Then and now, Bahia's street festivals and feasts, 
gather different sections of the population, outsiders and foreigners. They can be interpreted as a metaphor of society, as well as both a political tool and a stage for the Candomblé community, the Afro-Brazilian syncretic religion system, uh, which in this piece shows its strength or performs its strength. Uh, lately, they also become stages for the local and political state politicians and part and parcel of the roots and curious places, folders of the state of, of Salvador Tourist Board. I have to say that the American consulate already in 1946, uh, produced a list of, of, of Bahian festivities in English to be given to American uh, visitors uh, and um, identifying the most authentic, the least authentic, the most dangerous, the one to visit, the one not to visit. It was already part of, of, of a certain uh, grand tour in many ways, uh, especially of black scholars, but not only black scholars. Uh, let me say that the, 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 the Franklin Frazier got a grant, a very prestigious grant, uh, and you can read the details in a, in a small paper I, I sent to Tanzania well, to, to circulate it, please. So um, since I haven't got much time and I won't spend more time on the pictures, let me gloss over many of the details. But it gets a very prestigious grant um, as part of the, of, of the uh, good neighbor policy, uh, because the Americans were very afraid of the neutralist tendency of large part of the Brazilian public opinion. The kind of neutralist tendency that uh, um, uh, was um, very powerful in Argentina. Argentina, after all, stayed neutral during World War II uh, and not so neutral after World War II in many ways, as to the Nazi runaways, as, as you might have read. Um, Brazil, in the end, joined the Allied forces and, and provided uh, important Navy bases uh, raw materials and so forth, and, and Navy, uh, Navy and aircraft bases. Um, but one of the main reasons for, for neutralism in, in the public opinion of Brazil was, why do we have to fight uh, uh, undeniable Nazi racism uh, to defend uh, US racism, which is closer to our reality? Huh? So uh, Nelson and Rockefeller sent to Brazil three, three scholars, uh, <laughs> Three characters. Uh, one scholar uh, uh, who had, uh, uh, Franklin Fraser, who had his own agenda, um, which was in many ways to uh, rival Melville Herskovitz, and he will indeed in Bahia rival Melville Herskovitz, uh, with whom, anyway, he will stay friend for the rest of his life. It's an interesting story the relation between Franklin Fraser and Melville Herskovitz of a tense friendship. Uh, never they never uh, move war to one another. They were adversaries, but never, never enemies. Huh? Until the moment they died, they corresponded with one another, including about their uh, diseases, heart attacks, and, and all that. Um, in a quite cordial manner, by the way. Uh, the, um, the three characters sent to Brazil are revealing of, of, of uh, why the cordiality of Brazil synthesizing Bahia was important. And I will have a bearing on the uh, use of Bahia in the 1950s to sustain the large UNESCO project, uh, research project on race relations, which itself was to sustain the statement of race, of race, of the absence of race with UNESCO of 51-52. Listen, Orson Welles, Walter Disney in our Walt Disney, and Lorenzo Tana. Walt Disney was the only successful one, I mean, anticipate, completely, because he produced two characters, Jose Carioca and uh, the other one, I don't remember. Uh, and he produced a beautiful movie, which you can see beautiful, but of course, <laughs> annoying to us, uh, who tried to make a Bahia, uh, to make, to do serious science in Bahia. You know, you're constantly seen as a tropical, infantilized place, which is, uh, the, the, have you ever been to Bahia? It's on YouTube, YouTube. It's by Walt Disney. Uh, it was very popular in those days, uh, and of course it was shown across all the possible army movies, movie houses, everywhere. It's a short uh, animation movie. Uh, uh, and of course, in the, the character of the malandro, of the hustler, Ze Carioca, uh, uh, a crow, uh, intelligent, a bit of a crook. You know? uh, again, this is a character uh, some of us like, uh, but none of the Brazilian elite would have identified with such such a character in, uh, in order to, to praise the country. Uh, but he was successful in, in that respect. Uh, Orson Welles got uh, shot a movie, which we never finished, on the carnival uh, in Rio de Janeiro, 
which showed that there were many more black people involved in the carnival. That is to say, whites were there, but there were, the heart of the carnival was a black carnival. Right? Uh, and it was, carnival had just been rediscovered during the populist dictatorship of Getúlio Vargas as the national festivity on condition that it be purged of too much of its Africanism. That's a word that he was in those days, not my word. African sounds, percussions, too much sweat, too much uh, uh, rum, and all the rest. And, uh, and it's the movie shot by the images, the moving images shot by Orson Welles showed that the cannibal was, going, was not exactly what they did want the cannibal to be. Uh, so the, it was sent back to, to the United States also because he misbehaved, engaging with black women, drinking too much, uh, some well style, uh, he was sent back to the United States with uncompleted work. The third person was Franklin Frazier, who was sent to tour Brazil to show to the, uh, to the audience uh, they had a double agenda. He had his own agenda, Franklin Frazier. He wanted to be a black cosmopolitan and get an international um, perspective on, on the black Atlantic, he, he, he would have called it in those days. On, uh, on, on, on race relations across the globe, which eventually managed to do to some extent when he got a position at the UNESCO in the 50s. Uh, but, the, uh, but the American um, uh, counselors and, and often dragging their feet because they were not always racist at treating, giving, they gave them, uh, as they had done to Ralph Bunch, another black American. Uh, um, not only academic status, which you had, uh, but uh, diplomatic status. Huh? So lots of press conferences, lots of attention, headlines in all newspapers, you know. Um, uh, and the idea was uh, the United States is intervening. Uh, Roosevelt was, was the praise of Roosevelt, of which, uh, of whom, of course, uh, Fraser was a staunch supporter. Huh? Uh, we're doing something about segregation. The United States is not staying put. Uh, there is a new black elite we're working towards. So he, he was doing his own agenda, but he was also used by the, by the United States government and uh, uh, as part of the war effort. And he kept on doing that as part of the war effort. Yeah? Um, eventually, when he gets his position in, uh, in Paris, uh, it shows, this is what I'm doing in research now, the UNESCO archives, it shows that he is an actual black cosmopolitan and he's interested in African studies. He's one of the founders of the African Study Association. An interesting thing, since I cannot get into many details, I want to go move to the pictures and, and expand a bit on some de- with some details with the pictures, is that the three scholars, Lorenzo Tana, Frankie Frazier, and Melville Eskowitz, and his, fra- and his woman, Frances Eskowitz, who was an anthropologist in her own right, uh, much more than we imagine nowadays, I've discovered, um, were the founders of the first three Department of African Studies proper. In the United States, at Fisk, uh, Lawrence Fatana, Howard, uh, uh, Frankie Frazier, and Northwestern, Melvin Heskovitz. Melvin Heskovitz got all the funding, the others didn't, didn't have enough funding. Uh, Howard has some funding through Ralph Bunch, but it is interesting that it was the three American scholars in Bahia that uh, not only were foundation important for the making of African American studies, but were the three founders of the first three Department of African Studies proper. So one of the one of the part of my of my morale, if you want, is that African studies, Afro-Brazilian studies, and African American studies are born in the same cauldron uh, in many ways. Huh? Uh, there is an entanglement of agendas, uh, of financing, uh, and there it comes the Rockefeller, the Carnegie, the, uh, then the, the Ford Foundation. And they, they, uh, that makes it even if in the United States there there have been until very few years ago at odd with one another, so we cannot expand on that. Uh, their, their origin is very much similar, okay? And some of the notions developed in, in, uh, in Bahia, for instance, the notion of Africanism by Melville Herskowitz, developed also in Bahia. He had done research already in Haiti, he had done research in Trinidad, he had done research in, in, in Suriname, uh, a country where my first field work abroad was in Suriname. So in many ways, I. I, I, I mirror myself uh, in, in, in the Hesperus. Uh, and they've done very, actually very quite good research in Suriname for the time they had in those days and the knowledge they had. And um, say that when they come to Brazil, they write a letter saying, we're going to Brazil. This time, no sun helmets, please. 
they, they, they knew that it was a Derby fool in, Ta in Taumei, today's Penang, and in this country was very much uh, an anthropology of the colonial sort, all thanks to colonial uh, infrastructure. In Brazil, they knew that they would have to lead with the, with the beginning of a, of a network of scholars of some sort. Uh, the sheer size of the country would have produced an intellectual density had to relate to to some extent. Yeah? Uh, they did it in many ways, more than we would have imagined. Um, but the, the, the notion of Africanism uh, that, that you must have heard of it is the, the, the idea that, uh, 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 let me put it that, the contention between Frazier and Escovitz and Turner was in between, was on uh, the black family, largely. Not so much whether there, were, uh, um, there was a culture of, of African origin in Bahia, because they would, all, they would agree on that. And Fraser, believe it or not, agreed with that. There is a, a funny, which in the picture of this, of, of the, Nicole, there is a, a postcard written by Fraser to Hescovitz, where he says, you see, at long last I've discovered the African roots of, of, of Bahia. I recognize it. You know, so he knew that there was something of African origin, but that was not the, the issue. The issue was a perspective on emancipation and liberation and anti-racism. For, 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 for Frazier, the important thing was to understand race relations in Brazil as, as, as an expression of adaptation to poverty and subalternity. He recognized the African roots and the African origin of, of but was not his focus. His questions were focused, the interviews were focused on uh, uh, family life, uh, work, uh, poverty, arrangements, and satisfaction. Uh, quite funny, many of the questions were, are you satisfied? Are you having pleasure in life, in family life? Uh, quite, quite, quite uh, a vanguard for those days. Whereas for Herskovitz, it was important to prove that this, the matrifocality, the matrifocal arrangements of the black family in Brazil uh, and the word black family has never been used in Brazil, even now it's not in use, um, is, um, uh, was the remainder, was, a, was a part of, an African, of the African heritage. Uh, uh, <coughs> locality was by definition the import into the Brazilian context of, of family arrangement already present in, in Western Africa. Uh, we cannot get again in details whether there was historical, non-historical, whether matrifocal arrangements were hegemonic in those days or were hegemonic before uh, industrialist, the industrialization of slavery. Probably, possibly not. But this is the big contention. Uh, uh, Herskovitz's ideas uh, became again very popular in, in at the late 70s and 60s, together with the uh, with upcoming. Um, a new wave of, of less, uh, uh, a new wave of, of feminist studies and, and black feminist studies, when, with a certain rediscovery of matriarchality. Uh, and uh, Mabel Heskovitz has been uh, often celebrated, uh, uh, remembered as a, particularly for his book, uh, The Myth of the African Past, as a, as a, as a great recognizer. Uh, a great moment of acknowledgement of the, of the African origin of, um, of black cultures in the new world. Uh, Frankly, Frazier uh, had a different preoccupation. For him, the question was not, uh, perhaps because he was a sociologist and uh, Herskovitz was an anthropologist, for him, the question was the future of the black race, the future of Africa. Huh? Not so much, and his defense, his banner, was the place of black people in the future, in industrialization, in modernization. He's the organizer in 54 for the first conference on the industrialization of Africa, together with Balandier and Godelier, uh, French, let's call them neo-Marxist uh, anthropologists of Africa, uh, with whom he had a quite, and, and the group of Présence Africaine, he had quite of a good, good, uh, good um, connection. He, he liked to call himself a race, a race, uh, a race man and, and a class man. He was seen by other African American as a, as a communist in those days, and he had to pay a price for that. Uh, it never got the, um, the clearance for the second big job at the UNESCO that, uh, that was offered to him by, the, by, the, by Albert Mirdal and, and Metro, and he, he died in many ways because of this denial. Uh, Lorenzo Tana was in between. Lorenzo Tana was friend, personal friend with Frazier. The two were the first 
black social black PhD in sociology, Tracy had a black PhD in language in literature, literature, English literature uh, uh, term at Chicago. So they were, you know, good old fellows in many ways, and very much attached both to the Park, to the Chicago University of Chicago. Uh, so they were close. Huh? But theoretically, uh, Turner was felt much closer to, to Hesculus, the idea of Africanism, the idea that, you know, in, the pa in recovering the past, we can regain self-esteem. Huh? Uh, anthropology has always been much more generous with the past and with the future, and sociology is the other way around. So there is a tension in there, which is interesting. I think I've, I've, I've talked enough, uh, and uh, it is interesting, this whole American contention, uh, very important, took place in Bahia, uh, it left by year, uh, it created, it contributed to, to the <coughs> construct by year as an ideal field station. In the 50s, uh, two important field stations were created in American universities, often with funding from the Carnegie and the Ford Foundation immediately after, much more generous funding, which were the two more typical regions of Mexico, Yucatan, or Harvard, uh, and of, of, of Brazil uh, uh, by year. For, for Columbia University, University of Illinois, and other universities. They became the place where to train students, where to have field station. That's why we got so many American scholars there, including top notch scholars such as Marvin Harris and many others who did a PhD field work in Bayer. So we became little by little, we, we, we were important. Uh, we were not important. Then we became important uh, in Bayer because that was the place where. Um, uh, interracial cordiality was possible in the world, which was celebrating through the war and the Holocaust, that it was not possible. Huh? Then Bahia became again important in uh, after 48, after the declaration of apartheid in South Africa, when UNESCO was just uh, got flabbergasted, UNESCO was founded in 48, 47. One year after the declaration of apartheid, that sparked off a discussion within the United Nations, we need to have um, something to prove to the world that there, that there is no races. We had the Holocaust, now we have the declaration of apartheid, which is a crazy thing. And we need to, and uh, some of these connections created around Bahia were important to justify that it was exactly again in Bahia, the, the big research uh, involving these American universities, a research project we will start in 1950, will go on until, until the, the Brazilian dictatorship of 64. At different, different stages. Uh, it, well, from there, we, uh, we should have produced enough material to prove that there are children races. We could give some empirical uh, basis for the famous statement on race, which you can, might be aware of, but you can download from UNESCO.org. UN, uh, UN actually, not our, uh, statement on race. It was produced generated by the mind of Alfred Metro, who had been in Bahia, was friends with many of the people I, I mentioned in my research, and knew all this network. Uh, the big question, the big is, what has this meant, the centrality of Bahia for the making of all of this, meant and implied for the conditions for the, for the production of knowledge locally? Being a field station for such an important thing, with such an important role in the world often moved by the best, by the best uh, uh, and I would say politically relevant uh, motives, has not contributed to, uh, has not improved the production of knowledge locally, huh? because it's often got associated with the infantilization uh, and, and, and tropicalization, the almost synonyms uh, of, our, of our existence. Uh, so when you arrive to Bahia nowadays, in spite of the very high incidents of inequality and homicides, the first thing you see at the airport is Soria was Estana Bahia. Please smile, you're in Bahia, it's a, it's a pun. So we are condemned to play this game. <laughs> and uh, not that I do not see the importance of this all, uh, but you know, uh, it's important that the field station moves to something else, also to a place from where race relations <coughs> can be analyzed worldwide. Um, this is what we've been trying to do in our work. Let me let me show you some pictures. Do we still have ten more minutes? Yes. Because the way these these three uh, four actually actors, uh, I start with Frazier, then I go to Turner, then we go to Francis and Heskovitz, show a very different perspective on the same topic. They had their arguments on the origin of the black family 
became even more uh, interesting to me because it generated around the same interview, the same court of people in the same Candomblé house of Gantua, uh, which is again, is on the corner of the house where I live. I can hear the Gantua drumming from my bedroom uh, every so often, I have to say. Uh, so it is, um, and it is the place where I teach my, my, my last class every semester. Uh, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a, um, is a candomblé temple, if you know that, uh, where that has an historical relationship with, with anthropology, with the making of Brazilian anthropology. So as part of this form of playing tribute, I, I teach my last class every semester there with the support of the house. I think they give us a bit of infrastructure, sound, and all the rest of it. So here you have Frazier, who did research there. You have the lots, lots of this is his arrival in Brazil. Headlines. It comes with this one. This is the hotel where they stay. This is one of the roads, Avenida Liberdade, leading to Salvador. Just to give you an idea of how the city was in those days. This is uh, to the right. You see, uh, Fraser himself in white. Uh, he was uh, he had defined by the, the local elite as a show in Mulato, Mulato Frajola. He wasn't even mulatto, but since but since he was actually darker than a mulatto, but you know since he, he had dollars, then he became a mulatto, in the, so to speak. But you see, he likes to take picture with the with the people. You see here with the kid, he's a sociologist, and all his pictures are identified, as he did in the Black family in the United States. All his pictures are identified. These are really like hundred years from the, the house where I live. Now, of course, houses are. And not anymore in touched uh, earth and they are, tend to be in bricks. But some of these people are uh, not alive anymore, but their descendants are still alive. I've been able to recognize many of them. You see, the, the, these are for almost uh, not all of the people are blacks, so quite a few, there are no whites, but quite a few mestizos. Uh, some are in traditional clothes. Some are the, for many of them, this is the only picture they have of the, in their life. Huh? Uh, and all of them have the name and number, and there is an interview associated. So he was, uh, he had a plan, he saw this as a pilot of research. He wanted to come back and repeat an in depth research. Um, my, most of the informants were, were women, but in those, this is the entrance of the Candomblé house, and you can see that many people were, were still wearing. Uh, uh, African clothes, really African. And uh, in the 40s and 50s, the transition was from Africa to Afro. Uh, the Afro is, a, is, a, is an aesthetical construction, aesthetical project that will come in the 50s. When the last Africans are dead, then Africa is symbolically rediscovered. When the last Africans are still alive, African born people or descendants of slaves are still alive, African is still, Africa is still something that's part of daily life rather than of tradition. You know? This is it, the driver that they, they had with bow tie. He liked to be in the pictures. This is a famous drum, drama. Uh, you know, drums have names uh, and souls and character. So it's interesting, the phrase here has is that all of them take pictures of the same drum because these drums are very powerful. The driver, always in between. This is my Menininha, the most famous candomblé, candomblé uh, priestess of the, of the time. I'm in Nia. The last two African born people in, in the region. They were very old by then, but he managed to interview them. This is a picture of a beautiful woman. He sells, he sends to Turner. And uh, you can see that, that they, they enjoy carnival. And uh, these are the interviews that he does. Uh, you can see the use of the same style, Chicago style of the interview he had done in, in his large project in Chicago, the Black Family. This is the postcard uh, where he writes to 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 Hescovi saying, "I do I do have found uh, African roots. I, 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 be be at peace with that." So, Lorenz Rotana, the linguist. Here's a picture of Martina de Bonfi, uh, a Lagos born uh, free African who moved to Bahia, and he was one of the person of this Bahia, Lagos Bahia Salvador. Uh, connection that lasted at least until the 30s, uh, by which the 
Candomblé was constructed, a largely transnational Yoruba project that Lauren Matori and many of the people have described. This is the this is the uh, the recording and transcription. He has hundreds of uh, hundreds of uh, folk tales written in Yoruba. Well, in in, in a Yoruba Creole that he never mixed, of course, with Portuguese and other African languages. They never managed to actually publish them. Uh, I received from Northwestern, from the head uh, archivist, uh, a copy of them, and the plan is now to try to eventually publish them. When he tried to publish in those days, at first he couldn't publish them because he, uh, he was a black scholar and never got, managed to get enough funding. He only managed to get go back to Africa with the Peace Corps. You know, this is true, the history of, of black scholarship in the United States is, is the history of discrimination. When eventually managed to go to so that just before dying, it was the late 60s, in the, the, the top moment of the, of the Biafra war, then Yoruba nationalists were uh, um, unsatisfied with, the, with this Creole version of the language. So this was a pure Creole, this is a pure Yoruba. Uh, this is not correct Yoruba, it's not worth publishing it. So we missed, we missed this. But what he discovered was in those days, an African-based language was in use in daily life, not only as a sacred language. Here is Joaquin da Golmeia, notorious homosexual. So for him, he takes pictures of all sorts of, this is in Cachoeira, actually San Felix. He registers whether the person speaks a Bantu language, a Congo language, and, and, uh, and a tries. And he, he surprisingly, not surprising actually, he gets a uh, copy of the passports of this Lagos uh, uh, Salvador uh, transnational bi binational families. They're often trinational because many of them send the kids to, to Britain to study. Uh, you see, these are two uh, kids, uh, well, young men, uh, of Bayern born uh, blacks who returned to, to Nigeria. Uh, and uh, they were part of the elite and were sent to Britain to study law. Here. This is a very famous Bayan family. Uh, the surname is still quite well known. The last, uh, and then this is carnival. They were, they were, the women they were having fun together were carnival, were people of the middle class, mestizo middle class, and, and they join carnival like anybody else would, would do with in their social position. It's a poll informants. And you can see here, for instance, that they, you see the African way of carrying kids, you know, was still, was still part of daily life. In spite of the effort of the local elite to de Africanize Bayan cities, Brazilian cities. This is a beautiful copy of the. How much, how much time do I have? Um, you've gone over, so have another five minutes. Five minutes, five minutes, okay. This is an interesting uh, example of a self-constructed dictionary of uh, lingua africana, uh, done by a famous, uh, uh, I could call it, a cultural agent in the Candomblé world, who was, in, who was uh, 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 a key informant to, to the tree scholars. Uh, he created his own African dictionary. Uh, uh, Portuguese African dictionary, and he and he uh, tries to convince each of every of them that this is the la uh, the language that's spoken. Okay, Melville and Francis Escovitz have different kind of pictures. You know the you know the, the, the scale of Africanism. This is from from the book the myth of the uh, they, they picture the world in in the new world in areas where Africanism is more or less condensed. You know. The United States scores very low, uh, Haiti, Suriname, and Bayes score very high. Huh? They come also to support this state. Curiously, in the present is the Italian consulate, Casa d'Italia. That's where I go to renew my passport in the center. They are supported by Jose Valadares, is, is the, the local, uh, he was the head of the, uh, the Bayern Museum, uh, one of the most outstanding local intellectuals of the elites. And they take hundreds of pictures, particularly of this famous procession on December the 1st that goes again to Bonfim. Look how beautiful these pictures are. Uh, they spend the day on the boat. They are one of these boats. 
but you never get to see them. You see, carnival uh, during the procession of like you see uh, the, the, the Bayana women uh, they go to offer the uh, take the offering to the church with with a transvestite uh, on top of drag queen transvestite. I don't know how you call it in, in modern English English. Uh, as part of the procession, without it, it means any any insult to the religious dimension of it. It's part of it. Uh, and the Hescovites they were very prudish, but they were very very good observers of the uh, of the presence of homosexuals in in, in Candomblé life. Uh, the difference is that they didn't want to that to have too much evidence because they were of course uh, aware of homophobia and how much that would have. Uh, being perceived as a stain on, on Candomblé. But everybody who knows Candomblé knows that Candomblé is a place of freedom for, for sexual diversity, if you want to call it that way, then and now. You can see in many ways a touch of Pierre Berger, Cartier Bresson in the pictures, but you never see them. So, you see, this is, by the way, exactly the view from my house. <laughs> and the, the festivity is still very much the same. With capoeira being played in the street. Where is the capoeira guy? Yeah, yeah. You get it, so the boom thing. Man. This is what's cannibal in those days for the elite. And then they have lots of pictures for a number of candomblé houses, particularly from the, from the Bogun, uh, which is a house of obvious Dalmayan origin. So they were they had they had they had a specific focus on the houses that they conceived of as being more pure, more authentic. Huh? They had done this beautiful research in Dalmay. So they tried to make the wrong connection, huh? the idea of purity. They were not interested in syncretism, in mixture, in the kind of candomblé that combines uh, different traditions. Okay, these are the informants. Uh, some of them are um, can be traced the same drums that you see in the beginning. So there are things that touch everybody. They manage to take pictures, you see, of, of, of possession. They give authorization with a special camera, which in those days was a very daring thing to do, technically. Yeah? And they have uh, recordings. Uh, Lorenzo Tana and, the, and the Frazier come there, arrive there with huge recording machine with the engine moved with gasoline. Can you imagine the size of like 300 kilos weight of uh, machine? So they do the first recording of voices of people in the Candomblé world and of, um, and of, uh, and of, uh, of Afro-Brazilian music that we are aware of. Um, I'm over, five, now I'm finished. And this is just to show you, for those of you who know Brazil, that African tradition were part of daily life, of food. This is was the, what nowadays we call Bayana, which is completely a much more uh, of an aesthetic project. The, the African food was sold together with fruit. It was not an ethnic project. It was a survival strategy. Yeah? Uh, nowadays, things are, are different, you see? Kind of frying and, and selling of food, the kind of skirts. Uh, again, this is a finish with the, with the celebration of Fresco is important to Brazilian anthropology. The funding of my Fagoldade Institute by a speech by Melvin Heskowitz. And this is Melvin Heskowitz, the picture I will recover from this movie from Schomburg, look how elegant it was, and Francis Eskowitz talking to uh, the Bayern elite about the importance of our Brazilian studies. I think that is it. Thank you, Professor Sansoni, for presenting this work just this evening, and thank you for coming, and thank those online who are observing through the ether.